biggest wish I wish tonight. Once upon a time, the gentle stories of our childhood always began like that. Those lovely fantasies also ended with this wonderfully optimistic phrase, and she lived happily ever after. If only life were like those stories. This is Stephanie, and the most important happening in her world right now is the collecting of parrot feathers. Oh, you don't have parrot feathers available for the picking in your hometown? Well, perhaps you don't live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and you don't have a parrot jungle near you. But when you're four and a half years old, and all you know is sunshine and green grass and water all around, parrot feathers are reality. You know what isn't real? Snow and blowing winds and cold. And so in this natural warm world of Stephanie's, what can be more fun than a picnic at the parrot jungle with your mom and dad and your two and a half year old baby sister, Kiki? Times like this become the fabric of our memories. These are the home movies of our lives, including <laughs> the inevitable that happens when children discover they're on camera. Kids seem to be the same no matter where you go in the world. Life can be so pleasant. You feel so close to mom and dad as you laugh together at the antics of trained parrots and cockatoos. Only, sometimes you feel just a little different. You wonder if the other kids can feel that nagging pain which comes up your leg and into the small of your back. Not just once in a while, but all the time. But on the other hand, the other kids don't get to play with the birds, to hold them in their arms, to pet them. There must be something special about you because of the way grown-ups seem to go out of their way to make things nice for you. At times, you could almost say to yourself, Stephanie, you've got everything to live for. But you don't know quite what that means. Most of the time, you're content. You get a lot of attention, sometimes a little too much. There is the pain, of course. But there's something more, something in the way mom or dad will look at you. You see them smile, but sometimes they look like they want to cry. The only time you wanted to cry was when your best friend from right next door, Allison, moved away. She left the land of warm water and sun and pretty flowers for a world that you don't understand. When she talked to you on the phone, she spoke of snow and big sleds that are pulled by horses and big furry jackets that you wear. You think about that a lot, but there are other things to think about. So many nice things. The last time you talked to your friend Allison, she asked you to come visit her in Utah. She wanted to play in the snow with you. You told her that you'd have to have a jacket with a warm hood because you don't have much hair anymore, ever since that time you were in the hospital. But what a wish that'd be, to see snow for the first time and to see Allison again. You'd really love to go on that trip. But mom and dad can't afford it. Not with all those hospital bills for you. 
but something has happened. Somebody named Make-A-Wish has granted your wish. That's really wonderful. But you just can't imagine what it'll be like. Allison was right. Snow is different. It's not the same color as grass. It doesn't feel like grass. It doesn't taste like grass. It's a whole experience of its own. You'd never thought you would ever in your life slide down a hill with your dad. You never thought you'd throw a snowball at your mom. you're going to remember these moments for the rest of your life. But snow can make you very tired. Somehow when the cold seeps through your clothes, the pain in your legs seems to get worse. You walk a little funny, and finally you don't want to walk. You want Mommy to pick you up, to hold you. And you know something that's odd? You missed the parrots. You missed the bright colors and the way they waddle and the special ways they look at you. You remember. Oh, you'll remember all of this when you go home. Yet while you're here, your memories of those other days are so very strong. That's really what your life is all about, isn't it? Memories. It's nice that you're here, you and Mom and Dad and Allison together, making tomorrow's memories. Of course, what you don't know, dear Stephanie, is that you are four and a half years old, but you may never blow out the candles of your next birthday cake. For a cancer is inside you, and memories must grow more precious as each day fades away. So little time. So little time. Like the birds you love, the birds who seem so sure and free, like all the birds you've seen flying free into the sun, you feel for a moment that you are one with them. Your wish has been granted. If only we could grant the one we'd like to give you, the one which is out of our grasp, the one which would end Stephanie's story with those wonderfully unrealized words from the gentle stories of our childhood. And she lived happily ever after. If we could, if we only could, give you a lifetime of memories. <laughs>